Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. It's the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, and every able-bodied Muslim who can afford to is expected to go at least once in their life. It's a week-long physical and spiritual journey that Muslims believe brings you closer to God, purifies sins, and encourages unity. But there are a lot of rites and rituals which can be quite confusing. I performed Hajj as part of a Bosnian group, along with my parents. So let me try to break it down for you, based on my experience. The Hajj reenacts the Prophet Muhammad's final pilgrimage when he retraced key moments in the life of the Prophet Ibrahim, or Abraham. Our journey began in the Saudi city of Medina, where the Prophet Muhammad lived for the last part of his life. Although not part of Hajj, many pilgrims will try to visit at the start or end of their trip. Before we set off towards Mecca, we entered the state of Ihram. No, that's not a tiny Gulf monarchy. It refers to a state of spiritual purity. It comes from the Arabic root ahrama, which means to prohibit. Because there's a bunch of things pilgrims can't do during Hajj. No haircuts, no hunting, no perfume, no sex, and no fighting. We took a seven hour bus ride from Medina to Mecca and arrived shortly after midnight. We immediately performed tawaf, which is circling seven times around the Kaaba. That's the black, silk-covered stone structure Muslims believe was built by Ibrahim and his son Ismail, or Ishmael. And it was an indescribable feeling seeing it for the first time. After that, we performed another rite, called Sai. That's when men jog and women walk seven times between the hills of Safa and Marwa. According to Islamic teaching, that's where Ibrahim's wife Hajar, or Hagar, ran looking for water for herself and her son. The ritual ends how Hajar's search ended, with a drink from the Zamzam well. Many pilgrims then travel to the tent city of Mina, about eight kilometers away in order to spend the day in prayer, while others opt to go back to their hotels and gather their strength for the second and most important day of Hajj, the day of Arafah. This is considered the high point of Hajj, both literally and metaphorically. It involves hiking up Jabal al rahma or the Mountain of Mercy, about 20 kilometers from Mecca. Pilgrims begin arriving before dawn and stay till after sunset. Temperatures reached over 45 degrees Celsius when I was there, so it's good to bring a small portable fan and an extra set of clothes. We were served three meals, so didn't take food apart from some dates and zamzam water. Many Muslims around the world fast on the day of Arafah, but they discourage that for pilgrims because it's so physically demanding. This is where the Prophet Muhammad delivered his last sermon. He also taught that God forgives and rescues more people from hell on this day than any other. We prayed three of our five daily prayers here, and in the afternoon we performed wukuf, or standing in supplication on the hill. We left shortly before midnight to a place called Muzdalifa, where we prayed the last two prayers under the stars and picked up exactly 49 pebbles for the next day's ritual. We then walked eight kilometers through the night to Mina, which was around 17,000 steps according to my phone. Buses and wheelchairs are available for those who need them. At sunrise, we reached the Jamarat Bridge, where pilgrims symbolically stoned the devil. This is where, it's believed, the devil tried to dissuade Ibrahim from obeying God's test of faith to sacrifice his son. Afterwards, pilgrims trim or shave their hair to exit the state of Ihram. The journey to Jamarat is repeated over the next two days. And on the sixth day of Hajj, pilgrims usually perform a farewell tawaf around the Kaaba. One typically turns their gaze away from the Kaaba after the last circuit to symbolize the completion of Hajj. Hajj was one of the most transformative experiences in my life. And although only obligatory once, like many other pilgrims, I hope to return again.